Well, I can tell you that in the rest of 2011, there will be three partial solar eclipses. The first will be on June the 1st in Siberia, and it will begin at exactly 7.25 and 18 seconds. That will be closely followed by another partial eclipse, which will be visible across the Antarctic Ocean on July the 1st. And the final partial solar eclipse of the year will be on November 25th, and it will be visible from New Zealand. Now, I'm going to show you exactly how we can predict that. Well, to work it out, you need to know how the Earth spins on its axis. You need to know the precise details of the Moon's orbit around the Earth and how the Earth orbits around the Sun. And then you throw in a bit of mathematics and a bit of physics and you can work it all out. It's simple. But how did we know the positions of all these celestial objects in the sky in the first place? To show you, I need to get out to the clear skies of the countryside. This is Glastonbury. With the history stretching back thousands of years, people have come here to gaze at the stars. Each of those stars acts as a landmark. Plot their positions and you can work out exactly where the Earth is in space. Well, if I was to ask you what are the stars and you knew absolutely nothing, then you might say, well, they're just points of light attached onto a giant sphere surrounding the Earth. That's not as ridiculous as it sounds because if you just take a casual glance up, then they look like they're just fixed, shining in the sky. But if you look a little bit more closely, then you'll see that they're not fixed at all. They're gradually rotating around in giant circles. But it's not the stars that are moving. It's us. The Earth is continually spinning. You can't see it by looking down. You only notice it by looking up. I can show you that the stars appear to move across the sky by just taking a picture. Now, I'm not taking an ordinary picture because I'm leaving the shutter on the camera open for 10 seconds. You see, the stars now don't appear as points in the photograph. They appear as streaks or lines. And that's because during the 10 seconds that the shutter was open, the Earth has rotated by quite a large amount below the night sky. And so the stars have left a trail behind them. If I were to stand here all night, which I'm not going to do because it's freezing and blowing a gale, then after just four minutes, I would see that the stars had moved around one degree across the sky. If I were to stand here for 12 hours and still be alive, then they would have moved 180 degrees across the sky. And if I came back at the same time tomorrow night, so 24 hours later, then the stars would have completed one complete 360 degree rotation around the sky. By looking at the stars, we can work out exactly which point of the night it is as the Earth spins on its axis. But that's not the whole story. The position of the stars don't only tell you what time of day it is, but also what time of the year it is. It's too cold up here, so I need to go somewhere a bit warmer to explain. Today, you only need to look in a diary to find out what month it is. But you couldn't do that 2,000 years ago. Back then, they knew the date because it was written in the sky. If you know which stars are in the sky every month, then you have a very simple calendar. This is the Sun, and this is the Earth. And this is the Earth's North Pole. So when the Earth is here, the North Pole is tilted away from the Sun, and this is Northern Hemisphere winter. And this is also the night and this is the day, because the sun is in the sky over here. So when you look out at night, you see the stars that are over in this direction, constellations like Orion and Gemini. Now, as the Earth moves around in its orbit, so to here, this will be Northern Hemisphere spring. Now, that's the night, and this 
is the day. So you see the stars in that direction, constellations like Leo and Virgo. And the Earth carries on on its orbit. This is Northern Hemisphere summer. This is the night, and you see constellations like Sagittarius. And then the Earth continues in its orbit again, completes one full cycle, one year. You're back to the winter stars again over there, constellations of Orion and Gemini. Watching the apparent movements of the stars and the moon, which takes a little under a month to orbit the Earth, means that we can chart precisely where we are in relation to the sun at any time. So the whole sky runs like clockwork, and we understand that clockwork precisely because it behaves in perfect accord with Newton's laws of gravity. So we can predict where anything will be at any time, thousands and thousands and thousands of years into the future, with such precision that I can tell you the next time the moon moves in between the sun and the earth and casts its shadow over the United Kingdom will be on the 23rd of September 2090 and that total solar eclipse will last for a maximum of 2 minutes and 39 seconds.